Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm privileged to present you uh, the study data of our European MCL network. In fact, that was challenging the current standard of care in younger patients, which is autologous transplant uh, plus um, cytarabine containing induction. So just as some kind of feedback, uh, backup uh, uh, ground. So this is the disease we're talking about, Mantis lymphoma, with an incidence of about one in 100,000. Uh, a challenging lymphoma, why is that? Uh, because it can have a rather indolent cause shown on the left side. This is what we call the conventional or classical Mantis lymphoma, either leukemic or nodal. Or it could show a rather aggressive clinical cause, and that's based on biological risk factors like blastoid uh, cytomorphology, high ki 67 and specifically P53 alteration. Concerning the current standard of care, this is shown uh, on the left side. This is a study we initiated 25 years ago, which finally, and that is the only randomized trial, confirms the overall survival benefit of autologous transplant almost doubling from five to ten years. Um, however, we meanwhile have improved our first-line treatment. In relapse, and this is another data set specifically in the early relapses, so patient, which may indicate some chemorefractoriness, patients who were salvaged with targeted treatment, essentially ibrutinib, do achieve a significantly better overall survival. So that was the starting point of our study implementing this approach into first-line treatment. And that is our triangle trial with three arms. You know, this is Europe. We could not conclude on one question. And so essentially it incorporates three different comparisons. Patient inclusion criteria were younger patient qualifying for dose intensified treatments previously untreated and as mentioned in a suitable uh, performance status. And they received either the current standard of care, cytarabine induction followed by autologous transplant, or in the add-on arm, ibrutinib was added to the art shop as well, a fixed time maintenance of two years. And then the most interesting arm is the eye arm, which is somewhat a head-to-head -head comparison, um, essentially skipping autologous transplant and instead of that adding ibrutinib. During the run of the trial um, uh, it became obvious that our maintenance does improve PFS and overall survival so accordingly it was added to all three study arms uh, and essentially 58, 54 and 57 patients did receive rituximab maintenance uh, based on clinical routine and national guidelines. So this is the first comparison, um, the add-on design, so autologous transplant only versus the addition of ibrutinib. And what you can see, our primary study aim was um, um, freedom of uh, failure survival, which is pretty much like PFS, but on top of that, non-response uh, to, in, uh, to uh, the first-line treatment, but that was only one-digit patient numbers. Overall, you see there's a significant improvement of disease freedom at three years plus 16%, and that uh, corresponds to a hazard ratio of 0.5, and this is highly significant. Oops. Let me get. That is uh, the second comparison, which is the hat to hat comparison, so autologous transplant versus. Uh, ibrutinib and formally I have to explain that our background was autologous transplant is only justified because of its higher toxicity if there's a significant improvement of FFS. Well um, this hypothesis was rejected in fact the blue curve is the autologous transplant curve and the green curve is the ibrutinib arm. And again, there was a numerical benefit of 14%, and I should also add that this is not because the autologous transplant arm uh, performed worse than in previous trials. We almost have the identical outcome in our previous trial. And finally, 
The third question, if we add ibrutinib to the uh, multimodal concept, does autologous transplant add anything? And these are early days, we can't conclude so far, that is the statistical correct description. However, uh, you see these curves are totally overlapping so far. Finally, uh, how were these patients being salvaged? And, and this is shown here, so far the numbers are rather small, so I want to caution you. But anyway, uh, about 80% of the patients in the control arm were salvaged with the BTKI in contrast to um, the ibrutinib containing arms with only 20% being uh, salvaged. So to conclude, and I'm sorry I could not show you all data, um, definitely the add-on is uh, superior to autologous transplant only uh, based on uh, F, uh, FFS. And as mentioned, similar data we had for PFS. The statistical correct uh, um, comment is that autologous transplant is not superior uh, to oil protein, but you have to, uh, seen the curves. Essentially, you have a numerical benefit of 14% after three years in favor of oil protein. And what about the third comparison? Uh, there's no decision yet. However, you have seen the curves are overlapping and uh, the data I could not show is that autologous transplant buys in significant toxicity, so for the time being, this study favors the ibrutinib only arm. And based on a better tolerability, that also results in a numerical overall survival benefit uh, of 5% of both experimental arms over the old standard autologous transplant. Um, I'm not allowed uh, to provide any significance data so far. And with that I would uh, like to conclude. We established um, autologous transplant 20 years ago uh, and in my opinion now the better is the enemy of the good one. We have to move on. And of course I would like to thank all the people who are involved in this study. This was an academic trial supported financially by Janssen but uh, fully independently performed and that takes a lot of uh, activities putting that all together, 14 countries been participating. Uh, I, I emphasize that because I'm also the, um, the coordinator of the initiative against bureaucracy in clinical trials. Thank you.